So there are a lot of file managers for the shell that I see people use, but, and I've played around with them, but I just, I just like using the shell. Most part, I just use FZF. FZF will list out files and then you can filter through them by typing. So I can type in JPEG and we'll filter that and I can do that. And it works great with a bunch of different files. Uh, but what if I want to search them and I want a preview of it? Well, I'm going to show you two scripts I wrote that go together. Uh, so let me just go ahead and Vim and I'm going to go into my shell viewer and there'll be uh, links to these scripts in the description of this video so you can use them. Keep in mind, I created these scripts for myself and I'm just sharing them with you. So here we go. We are in this uh, shell viewer. Let me make this a little smaller. First of all, you know, if you pass it the variable set setup viewer, it's going to make sure that these dependencies are installed. Uh, this is for um, PDF files. These are for image files. Uh, bat is kind of like cat, but it color codes things. And Unique Convert is for converting uh, basically office files. Uh, and down here, basically, you just pass it a file and it's going to try a bunch of things to preview it. So let me give you an example. Let me go out here. I have some files in this directory. If I type in shell viewer and I give it one of these file names, for example, an image like this file here, it will display it using Chaffa, which converts it to these texts. It's not clear, but I can tell what that is, you know? And if I was to do the same thing, give it a different file name, maybe this, I don't remember which one I picked before, this one, you know, I can tell that's my kids, uh, you know, on vacation, we're sharing a drink. I know what image that is. It may not be clear, but it's, it's clear enough that I can tell as a preview for the file what it is. Uh, let me do another file. So again, it, tries to, if possible, display the file and show there. So here we go, we have a PDF file. I can press that and it displays it as text. I can look through it like this. I can see the text that's in that PDF file. There's also a file, same file, but as a uh, text file, an office text file. Um, so like a Word document. I'm gonna hit enter. It takes a second long, it's gotta convert it, but it does the same thing, forming might be a little bit different, but I get a preview of the text in that file. And then of course we have CSV files, which are just plain text, but I can shell viewer that as well. And it will show it to me using bat and color code it. And I also have that same file, but as a spreadsheet. So I can shell viewer that file. And again, it's got to convert it to a text file before it displays it. So it takes a moment, but it's there. Why would I do that? Well, I have another script or, that I wrote called well, it's just O for open. When I press O and I hit enter, it lists out all the files in the current directory and the subdirectory and passes them with a preview to FCF. And like right here, it actually starts with the directory and it gives me a list of files in the directory here. I can then scroll through these and, you know, give it a second for some of those office files to convert, but I can view them all. And then when I hit enter, so I'm looking at this one, I could hit enter and it will actually open up whatever the default application is. And this is great. So like if I was to go into my temp directory and I was just to hit O and hit enter, you can see that there's 8,215 files here that I'm looking at. Right now I'm looking at the current directory. It's giving me the tree view of that. Uh, but I can type in PNG uh, and there's a picture of me and my wife and my daughter when she was born. Uh, there's an icon for Tmux. Uh, let's see, I got a lot of uh, Doom textures in here because I've been doing some WAD editing. Uh, and again, I just hit enter and it will open up with the default application. But I know what image that is because I can see the preview of it. Uh, so let's actually, let's actually go into that directory and uh, run it again. So now I can hit O, it lists all the files in here. I can see the directory here. I can see text files as I'm going through. If I hit a binary file, like these are WAD files, these are map files, it's just gonna tell me it's a binary file. It doesn't know how to read. Although if there is an application that could display it in the shell, I could add that to my script. Uh, but let's go ahead and just do PNG. And now I can go through all these textures. And when I find the texture I want, uh, I can click on it and it will open it up. And that's that image there. So. I just wanted to share that because it makes it super quick and easy to search through files in your current directory when you're working on a project. Uh, let's quickly look at both those scripts. So again, I'm gonna look at the shell viewer. Again, uh, you can run the setup and it will install these applications for you. And here, after that, it's gonna check, okay, what is passed? If the file is passed exists, or it, if not, is it a directory? If so, echo the file name, and then it's gonna look, okay, does it have the extension of ODS? If so, 
convert it to text and display it to the screen. Is it an ODT, which is a text file? If so, convert it to a text file and display it to the screen. Is it a directory? If it's a directory, well then, you know, use tree to display it, only going down five levels and limit it to 200 uh, lines. If it's a zip file, I didn't even show that as an example, but a zip file, it will list the files inside that zip file. And then you could enter, it'll open it up with whatever your default zip file uh, extractor is. And then after that, it gets a little sloppier, but here it's going, okay, PDF, try to display it. If that fails, then display it with Chaffa, which is, will show it as an image. If not, then anything else, try to display it with Batcat, uh, also known as BAT, which will color code it with a line range of 50. Again, these are just the previews that FZF will display. So I, again, I wrote this for myself. It may not be the cleanest code. Let's go ahead and look at the script that goes along with that. Here, some people are gonna yell at me, there's a setup function, right? When we start, it's gonna say, say, is that shell view or that other script available? If not, it's gonna go into setup mode and it's going to try to pull it down from my GitLab page. And it's going to use sudo to do that so it can install it to your system, to your USR local bin file uh, folder. And it will make it executable. Uh, and then it will run the setup for that to make sure that it has all the dependencies installed. Again, a lot of people will be like, oh, don't ever use sudo, especially to download something. Well, again, I wrote this for myself and it's downloading it from my project. If you don't trust it, you can manually look at these scripts. They're not very long. I'm going over them right now. Next, uh, it's going to check, is there an editor variable set? If not, I'm gonna set it to Vim, which actually on my system, Vim points to NeoVim, uh, but it's gonna set Vim as your text editor, but you can change that if you like, you know, something else. Next, we're going to run the find command, pipe that into FCF, we're gonna prompt file to open, then we're gonna get a preview, and we're gonna say, use that shell viewer script, and then pass whatever file it is, and do a preview to the right at 75% of the screen. Next, once you select a file, once you exit out of FCF, if you selected a file, if you have not selected a file, it's gonna check, does that, is, is, did, did I pass something? If not, then just exit. So if you just control C or don't select anything from the list, it will just exit out. If you did select something from the list, it will echo the file name. It will then, in my case, I use Z shell, and so it's going to add the command that I've opened it to my Z shell history so that later on, if I wanna open that file, it's in my history. And then it's going to check, okay, did you pass an argument? to the O command. That way I can, I can force it to use a program. Instead of using the default XDG open on a X system, we'll open it with the default application. But I can also say, okay, if, a, if I pass a command that I want to open it with, force it to open with that, and then we actually run that command. So what do I mean by forcing it open? So like if I hit O and I choose a WAD file, it's going to try opening it up in Doom because Doom is a WAD file, right? Or Doom uses WAD files. Uh, but let's say I wanted to open it up in the editor. I can say O oh, and I can say Slade. And now whatever program I hit, it's going to try to open it up in Slade, which is opening up on my other screen here. Let me move it over here. So we open it up in the editor. So I can, I never really use that option, but I put that in there in case I want to force it to open it up with a certain application. Anyway, I'll put links in the description to both these scripts. They could definitely be cleaned up a lot. It's just one of those things. I use these scripts, well, I use the O command for open on my machine all the time because I'm at the shell all the time and I have projects and directories and I just want to hit O, quickly type in what I'm looking for, see a preview of it and hit enter to open it in whatever the default application is. I use it all the time. I like it better than having a file manager. And uh, I just thought I would share it with you. It's actually been up on my GitLab page or yeah, my GitLab snippets page for a while, but I thought I'd bring it to your attention in this video. If you have improvements, let me know, I'd love to see them. Uh, comment below what you think. If you're using it, let me know. If you like it, if you don't like it, what you like, you don't like about it, I'd love to hear. I do thank you for watching and please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the Cage, link in the description there. You can search through all my videos. There's also links to search through all my GitLab uh, projects, all my paste bins, and there's also a support section there. If you like my videos, you can support me in many different ways. I appreciate you watching and I hope that you continue to enjoy my videos. And I hope that you have a great day.